a look at the roots of administration of vaccines. In earlier sessions, we have talked about what's vaccination, what is immunization, what are the different types of vaccines. So today, let's look at how different types of vaccines are administered into human body. So what do we understand by roots of administration? A root of administration is nothing but a path or a road whereby a vaccine comes into contact with the human body. Now, the way in which a vaccine is administered is very critical for the purpose of immunization. How the body will react or how the immune system will react when a vaccine is administered depends on how the vaccine is administered. That means the site of entry of the vaccine into the body to the place where it is supposed to reach. So this is quite important to understand that the route of administration is a very, very crucial factor in understanding immunization. Right. So let's move on to what are the different routes of administration. The basic division is between oral and injectable. So as the word suggests, vaccines which are administered into the mouth without the help of a needle or a syringe are known as oral vaccines or vaccines administered by the oral route. Whereas vaccines which are administered with the help of a syringe or an, and a needle are known as injectable vaccines. So let's look at the oral vaccine. The example of oral vaccine which I'm going to give today is the most common one that is OPV or oral polio vaccine. Now what is done while administering this vaccine is two drops of the vaccine are put into the mouth of the child who is to be immunized against the disease poliomyelitis and that's all. So there's no needle, no syringe, no extra equipment needed or no expertise needed as such to administer the vaccine. The only care we have to take is the mouth of the child should be adequately open so that the two drops can be inserted and secondly the child should not be vomiting out or bringing out the vaccine once it has been administered. So uh, that's as simple as it is. So the oral route of administration. Let's move on to the injectable route of administration. The injectable route of administration as I said earlier requires needles and syringes so an equipment. It also is a skill in the sense that the way it has to be administered has to be uh, critically noted otherwise side effects of the vaccine would be more than what it is meant for. So let's look at what are the subtypes of the in injectable routes of administration. So the first subtype is intradermal as the word suggests intra means into dermal is skin. So the injections which are administered into the skin or into the superficial layer of the skin are known as intradermal injections or we call this route as the intradermal route of administration. In the case of vaccines, uh, BCG vaccine which is used for protection against childhood tuberculosis also known as Bacillus calmet-gurin vaccine uh, is the vaccine which is administered by intradermal route. Now this as you can see in the picture here the intradermal route of administration is the most difficult and the most challenging as health workers always say reason being it requires a lot of skill to inject the vaccine correctly into the superficial layer of the skin and why people are worried because if the vaccine is not correctly administered into the skin by mistake if it, if the needle is inserted into the deeper layers of the skin or maybe underneath the skin as we call as subcutaneous under the layers of the skin into the subcutaneous fat area what may happen is the vaccine um, the antigen in the vaccine is going to cause side effects. Generally, it would be neurovascular injury or neurovascular complications. So what will happen is the vaccine, instead of providing protection against childhood tuberculosis, the child will land into some other complications which are neurological in nature and which are quite scary and the parents will be really worried about it. So that's um, the reason why I said it's very critical in immunization to administer a vaccine using the correct route of administration. The next subtype of injectable vaccine is subcutaneous. As I said, it is under the skin. So the most common example of subcutaneous vaccine is measles, mumps and rubella or in countries where measles is given isolated vaccine, measles vaccine. This is the vaccine which is given by the subcutaneous route. Another vaccine which is administered by subcutaneous route is the yellow fever vaccine. Then we move on to the intramuscular route of uh, administration of vaccine. This is 
the most common uh, route of administration and most of the vaccines are administered by intramuscular route of administration. We need to remember that vaccines which contain adjuvants, adjuvants are substances which help uh, in retaining the binding and the effectiveness of the vaccine. These vaccines which contain adjuvants are mostly administered by intramuscular route. So when we say intramuscular, it means into the muscle. Examples of vaccines which are administered by intramuscular route are uh, diphtheria, pertussis, tetanus combined vaccine, hepatitis B vaccine, hemophilus influenza B um, vaccine and so on. Now what is the importance of understanding intramuscular route of administration? In children, in which muscles would you administer a vaccine? Is it muscles of the arm or muscles of the thigh or leg or into the buttocks or where? Now important things to remember about the intramuscular route of administration is in children the muscle mass is uh, much lesser as compared to adults. So when we administer a vaccine we need to take into consideration that the needle does not damage the structures underneath the muscle, maybe the bone or the vascular structures underneath. So we need to look at the mass of the muscle. So vaccines like diphtheria pertussis tetanus which are given as early as uh, um, eight weeks of life, we need to understand that the muscle mass is not quite developed. So the preferred site where we would administer an intramuscular injection of DPT would be the anterolateral aspect of the thigh. So that's the portion of the thigh which um, in the front wherein we have muscle mass which is more as compared to that on the buttocks and the risk of damage to the nerve if we give it on to the buttocks at that age is much higher. Definitely arm is not a choice for administration of vaccines in children because the muscle mass is really poorly developed in children at that age. So we need to remember that the roots of administration here are quite crucial in understanding the process of immunization. If a vaccine is appropriately administered by the given route of administration, only then is the effectiveness of the vaccine um, uh, ensured. Another thing is recently intranasal uh, what we say uh, route of administration has been found effective for certain vaccines like flu vaccine but there are still um, studies being done to test whether the safety of this vaccine is really um, really in the permissible limits because there have been side effects about it but for knowledge purpose we need to understand that other than oral and injectable forms of routes of administration we also have an intranasal flu vaccine which is available for administration. So that's all from me today about roots of administration. Thank you very much. Do subscribe and keep watching. Have a nice day.